Hello, good evening, everyone. This is Dari on World Streams Radio. Thank you to our listeners from all around the world for joining us tonight. To learn more about World Streams Radio, visit our website, worldstreams.org. You can also find us now on Facebook at facebook.com slash worldstreams. Our guest tonight is Palestinian-American journalist, author, editor, and former Al Jazeera producer Ramsey Baroud. Noam Chomsky said of his work, Ramsey Baroud's sensitive, thoughtful, searching writing penetrates to the core of moral dilemmas that their intended audiences evade at their peril. Ramsey's work has been published in hundreds of newspapers and journals worldwide. His third book, My Father Was a Freedom Fighter, Gaza's Untold Story, narrates the story of the life of his family, which he uses as a representation of millions of Palestinians in diaspora starting in the early 1940s up until the present time. Hi there, Saeed. Hello and welcome, Ramsey. It's an honor and pleasure to have you with us tonight. Well, hello there, uh, Ramzi Baroud, and welcome to World Streams Radio. It's a pleasure to have you with us tonight. Thank you, sir. It's great to be there. Wonderful. Well, let's start with the period in your book uh, before 1948. Why was it important for you to include this part as, as, as a background? It's, it's essential, really, to understanding the Palestinian story in general uh, and, and the Gaza story in particular uh, for us to go back into history. Because, uh, unfortunately, uh, when we look at the situation in Gaza, we, we tend to be very selective in terms of dates, in terms of um, trying to understand and to alienate the uh, historical events that lead to what is going on right now, war and siege uh, and all the rest. But in reality, uh, this has actually started long before the Hamas Fatah clash or the Hamas uh, uh, election to power or even the 1967 war. The date we should be looking at here is 1947, 1948. These were the years that really changed the the uh, demographics and, and, and the politics and the reality of Gaza altogether. And we cannot possibly understand what is happening right now without delving deeper into history. In fact, I would, and I, I contended, contended that in my book, I would argue that, in fact, it's earlier than 1948, uh, 1947-48. Uh, in fact, it goes back to much earlier history, decades prior to that, and that is the inception of the Zionist movement uh, in Europe and its impact on the immigration, uh, the, the, the uh, Jewish immigration to Palestine uh, in subsequent years. Uh, that was the real clash. This is where history, in fact, began and has changed the course not just of Palestinian history, but of, of the Palestinian person, of the Palestinian people as individuals, as collective, their relationship to the outside world and mm -hmm. to Palestine has also changed and been altered uh, dramatically as a result. So it's really interesting that you have to start with the political narrative in order to give a face, a human face, to the conflict itself. How important was that to you uh, in, in studying your book? It is, it is very, very important. But the problem is, in the way we, we, we narrate the Palestinian story, we end up um, looking at specific aspects of it. Uh, we either look at the humanitarian crisis in Gaza, and we remove that almost entirely from the political crisis and from the historical dimension. Or we would look at specific dimension within the specific dimension. And as a result, we end up dehumanizing the conflict altogether. So what I tried to do is I tried to find a way to weave in the history of the collective and the individual, the history of the group, the non-elitist history of Palestine, if you will. And if you look at it from that point of view, you're going to be astounded when you actually discover that much of what we actually thought we knew is, is not at all what is happening in Palestine and what has been happening in Palestine for decades. So, in other words, what you're saying is it is 
a deconstruct of the, the humanization of the conflict that's taking in place in Gaza. You have to do it in order to give Gaza a face. Absolutely. That's exactly what I am saying. And Gaza in particular, uh, Said, has been um, somewhat removed from the way that the Palestine history is being told, even by those who are sympathetic to the Palestinian narrative. Why? Very simple. Because we have been told that this is a, hist- a territorial struggle. You know, Palestinians and Israelis claiming the same piece of land mm-hmm. and, and, and so forth and so on. And since Gaza is a very tiny stretch of land, it didn't make much sense to position Gaza in the heart of, of the historical narration and, and, and the competing historical discourses. But in reality, Gaza is the heart of that history if we are going to redefine what that conflict is, is about. It's not about territory per se. It's actually about people. And, and Gaza has embedded or, or embodied, rather, the, the struggle and turmoil and the sacrifices and, and, and losses on, a human, uh, on the human level. And, and that's why I tried to reposition Gaza uh, where it belongs, but by doing so, I had to redefine how the conflict is being understood. Well, take us through uh, what was it before and the relationship between, uh, between here I have to say the Gazans, uh, if, if, I, if, that, if that term is, is useful, between people who lived in Gaza and the, the Jews at the time. How was that relationship? The history of Palestine is very curious and very precarious. I mean, the fact is, uh, there was a time in which there was no, not much in terms of outside influences on the political, cultural, social, uh, racial makeup of Palestine. Yes, there were outside influences in terms of, of, of Turkish influence, the Ottomans uh, and the British, but that was happening at, largely at an elitist level the vast majority of Palestinians didn't really feel it as much. And, and that, is the, the, that vast majority is what I deal with in, in, my, in, in my people's history of Palestine. The people who lived in villages, like the one where my grandparents uh, and my family came from, a tiny little village called Beit Daras, Mm-hmm. Uh, a village of a few thousand people who lived uh, somewhere between Gaza in the south uh, and, and, and Jaffa uh, or uh, Yaffa, uh, some, somewhat north. Um, and it was a very small village that has existed for a long, long time. I managed to trace back the history of, of Beit Daras to about 1250 because it was m- mentioned in Mamluk's history when they were present in Palestine in 1250. But I am sure it existed prior to that, perhaps for hundreds of years prior to that. And yet the existence of that village was never interrupted by the presence of any outside forces, whether the Mamluks or even the Crusaders earlier, or by the Ottomans or by the British. It was always there. And yet, at one particular juncture of history, history showed an extremely ugly manifestation of itself. And suddenly, Beit Daras did not exist. It was really the matter of days uh, between uh, Beit Daras existing and, uh, and Beit Daras not existing at all. And of course, Beit Daras here is a representation of over 500 Palestinian villages, localities and towns that were destroyed in 1947-48. So this rude awakening and this incredibly difficult juncture of history in which a nation exists one day and it doesn't exist the other day. And that's what Palestinians had, had to deal with. And this is the type of relationship they had with that particular forest that uprooted them and demobilized them uh, uh, in, in Palestine. And that is the state of Israel. So Palestinians in Gaza continue to define their relationship to Israel and to all that comes with Israel based on that very uh, uh, instance, that, that particular point in history when, when they, because of a political decision, no longer existed on a map. And that is really the reality and the, behind the turmoil in Palestine. And this is what many of us are missing, uh, because we constantly keep reducing uh, that reality to something almost entirely different. 